son of a... How did this happen in my town? God damn it! The head and limbs were severed and lined up, according to the lines that were drawn with her blood. Just like migratory birds flying systematically across the sky. Hey, Zach, what do you think this means? They're severed roots. Severed roots? This is the way the Clarksons kill someone when they want to cut them off from the family. And how do you know about this? Everyone in town knows about it. They're just too scared to talk. What does the V stand for, then? Beats me. What, you think I know everything now? Yes. Vilatatio. It means quarrel in Latin. That's what the V stands for. Latin. Intriguing, isn't it, Zack? There are no defense wounds on the corpse. In other words, Galena showed no signs of resistance when she was amputated. But, strangely enough, there are small traces of subcutaneous bleeding around the wounded areas. That's a vital reaction, which means she couldn't have been dead. You mean... Yes, that's right, Patty. Galena was amputated while she was still alive. And she never resisted. Is that even possible? It certainly isn't impossible. For example, if she was put to sleep with a drug, or if she desired the amputation herself. Why would she ever desire that? Mr. York, I'm sorry, but there ain't no way that could have happened. How can you be sure of that, Melvin? Our world contains phenomena that could never be explained with logic. This is especially true for phenomena in which humans are involved. Do you really think all the facets of love and hate can be explained with logic? Well, uh, no, I, I don't reckon I do. Yeah, might be too early to rule out those possibilities, just like you say. Zack, now we truly know just how deeply the Clarksons are involved with this. Patty, how long does it take to reach the Clarkson estate? Um, just a short drive. You just gotta head west along the Mississippi. You can't miss it. Got it. Thank you, Patty. By the way, Melvin, no matter how accelerated Patty may be, don't you think she's still a bit too young to see something like this? Thank you. For the record, I have no intent to instruct others on how to raise their children, but... Holy moly, you're right! Patricia, CLG! Come on, sweetie. The kids shouldn't have to see stuff like this. Daddy, it's too late now. Well, if you say no, I ought to see this, uh... Hello, my fellow gamers. Welcome, welcome back to the game here. Welcome back to Daily Pernition 2. Last time, we interviewed Francis Zach Morgan. We're back as Francis York Morgan to figure out what is our next move. I'm about the place to go to the Clarkson Estate. What? I wanted to see my stats. But how do you I can't remember how to check food and all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. skeletal gentleman's back. You found the flying serpent. But now, the flying serpent will come to find you. Yeah, that sounds right. And it looks like this flying serpent is a venomous one. Some become feasts, while others are eaten alive. Which fate would you prefer? Both sound marvelous, but let me check with Zack. A fine answer. <laughs> 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 
Find the one who fired the pistol at heaven. Within the white hall of beds, brandish the ticket to the goddess. And once again, you will see the other world. Do you comprehend the oracle? Zack, it looks like he's hell-bent on leading us back into that other world. Follow the oracle. Oh, I will, Hoongan. There are only two types of things in our world. Things that should be resisted, and things that should be accepted. Thank you. And I believe this oracle is something to accept. <laughs> Why does he look so mad? Do you think we're crazy for believing everything that skeletal gentleman says? Yes. No, we're not crazy. Not one bit. This is our destiny, that's all. But I shouldn't need to explain that to you, Zack. Alright. What's her odds? The one who fired the pistol at heaven. Firing pistols at the sky might be a rather common occurrence for the South. Remember? Young Guns. 1988. <gasps> directed by Christopher Kane. There's that great scene where Emilio Estevez keeps firing his Colt M1877 up at the sky. Well, but that film took place in New Mexico, didn't it? And the Oracle probably isn't referring to a situation like that. Bingo, Zack. Wait, what? We're currently running a race here. And the one who started this murder investigation is indeed the one who fired the pistol at heaven. In other words, the person who first discovered the body. According to the files, Lisa's body was discovered by Chuck Thompson, a crawfish farmer. He apparently works out of a fishing hut located in the marshes south of the bayou. Let's go pay him a visit. Who knows? We might even get to see some crawfish. What? Why isn't the murderer the one who started this race? Zack, this isn't like you. Of course the murderer isn't the one who started the race. The murderer is running it. They're currently in first place, and they're breaking all the rules. Any more objections, Zack? Why did it Within not... the White Hall of Beds. This one is even easier. There are only a few establishments that have a whole hall's worth of beds, especially in a small town like this. I'm sure you've already got a pretty good idea about what the answer is, Zach. Beds all lined up. Only an amateur would hear that and think it must be referring to a brothel. Uh. I mean, come on. Who would ever use White Hall as a symbol for a bordello? No, a white... You really think that's a White Hall? What? Sorry, but I have to disagree. There's a more obvious answer out there. A place that anyone would think of when they hear the words White Hall. I mean, come on. Who would ever use White Hall as a symbol for a bordello? No, a white house refers to the same place no matter what country you're in. A you church? never disappoint me, Zach. The church isn't even white! It's a medical facility. Oh! They invite their patients into rooms full of beds, where they're tended to by doctors and nurses clad in white. It's definitely a white hall. You always manage to impress me with your intuition. I'm really counting on you here, Zach. Oops, I think that went ahead. Woo, Tyndall! Agent York? You're trying to leave without your trustworthy assistant? Hello there, Patty. I'd never attempt such a thing. I was simply engaging in a battle of wits with Hoongan while I waited for you. Hoongan? Yes, the skeletal gentleman in the top hat. Not that story again. Is this how you always conduct your investigations? This is the way I work. I bet you can't find a single partner. Not even in the entire FBI. That's not true. I always work together with Zack. Oh, right. Zack. Don't worry. I'll be your partner while you're here in our town. Now, let's go investigate. <laughs> Zack in the most condescending tone imaginable. So my first thought is we should just go to the, the clinic first. I think it would be the smaller area of the two. At this point onward, I have no idea what I'm doing. 
The original Let's Play did not get this far. Oh! How's your mama? So, you're that hotshot FBI agent I keep hearing about. Big boss. And who might you be? I came to claim the body of my daughter. My daughter. Who was murdered in a holding cell after you detained her yesterday? Zack, I wasn't expecting to run into the final boss this early. You must be the head of the Clarkson family, PJ Clarkson. And you've come to claim the body of Galena Clarkson, whose dismembered corpse was found early this morning. Is that correct? Where did you learn that Galena had been murdered? Zack and I just learned of the news ourselves. This is Lou Carey. And I, I am P.J. Clarkson. There ain't a single thing I don't know about this town. I see. So then you must also know about the Severed Roots ritual. I have a question for you, Philip. We suspect that Galena was murdered by someone from the Clarkson family. Have you given that possibility any consideration? Listen up, you FBI piece of shit. You better watch your manners around my paw. Shut up, else. Daniel. But, sir... My bad, sir. I have you know I once had three children. But I must not have raised them very well. Because my son and my eldest daughter both ran away and never came back to me. The only one who stayed by my side was my second daughter, Galena. Then she done married Daniel here into the family and presented me with both an heir and a granddaughter. Seemed for a while as if things were finally starting to calm down. But then, someone corrupted both Galena and Lise. And I lost everything. Well, aside from my shit heel son in law, that is. You understand me, F. The, uh... Galena's death is nothing but a loss for the Clarkson family. It doesn't mean the Clarksons are automatically innocent, though. Humans don't always act out of self-interest, do they? That mouth. You're starting to sound more and more like your mother. We're leaving, Daniel. What? Treasured. Now, whether you end up being an angel or a demon, I reckon you're the man I've been waiting for all this time. Once you finish that autopsy and we're clear to take her home, I want you to give me a call. Ooh. They're phenomenal, Patty. So perfectly rural. Ominous statements, foul-mouthed insults. This town possesses a complicated system of communication that you just can't find in the city. <laughs> Work-centric emails are so cold and lifeless. This is what true human connections <laughs> feel like. Connections as visceral as blood itself. <sighs> so, Agent York, what's next on your agenda? The last boss may have gotten the jump on us, Patty, but I didn't let him shake my resolve. I intend to obey the skeletal gentleman's oracles, and that's that. First, we should head to either the home of the person who discovered Lisa's body or to the town's medical facility. Well, Zack, what do you think? 
I think next time on Deadly Premonition 2, we either go to 23 or 27, because 47 doesn't matter. I'll see you then.